So was that incredible or was that incredible? I had been waiting for the appearance of this guy and did his introduction disappoint? Uh, no, didn't. Really quick reaction go- Really quick reaction video for you guys today as I'm working on some who would win stuff right now. So apologies if this is not the most coherent structured in any way, you know, thing. But I really wanted to get a reaction out because this episode was something else. I just want to start off by saying that I'm going to keep my reaction deliberately kind of muted because I don't want the meaning of my words to get lost in that sort of giddy YouTuber over-exaggerated excitement that you often find in videos. But that said, ah! Let's get into it, and of course, there will be spoilers. So the app starts out kind of slow, with Himeno taking Denji back to her place, both at that level of drunk where it's just not fun anymore. Like, you can barely walk, you can barely just about breathe without hurling. The level of drunk where you wake up the next day feeling like someone has jumped on your head and maybe pissed in your mouth. Denji gets this close to doing the deed with Himeno, if it weren't for that damn chupa chup and some strange sense of loyalty to Makima getting in his way. So the only thing he ends up getting cozy with is the damn floor. Ah, oh, floor, you'll always be there for me. Floors are just lazy walls, did you know that? That's not an original thought, that's a friend of mine's thought. I stole it, I steal people's thoughts sometimes. Yo. But then we meet this guy who is the nephew of the Yakuza that tried to sell Denji's ass to the zombie devil. And he must have been seriously close to his uncle, don't you think? Because he's gone to all the lengths to get revenge. So he starts talking to Denji and co in a restaurant while there's a coordinated hit on the separate Devil Hunter teams. First, Makimo is shot in the head on board a bullet train. Then this granny opens up on Arai, I think it is. And then this dude pulls a gun in that restaurant and puts Denji and Himeno out of action with a couple of pew-pews. Pew pew. Aki does the con trick with the fox devil, which is a really powerful devil considering, right? It's just a fox. Like, I'm not afraid of foxes. It's one of the few things that I'm not afraid of. Some people are afraid of cotton balls. What the fuck? Yeah, they get anxiety attacks when they touch them. What the fuck? I oh, know a guy who ate his own foot. What the f what? In an epic moment where the huge fox head destroys the restaurant, and there's something about all the glowing red eyes in this moment that I really loved. Before the fox devil says that unforgettable line that there's something hideous in my mouth. Which is right before this guy slices his way out. Absolutely epic moment. Now in some versions of the manga he's called Samurai and others Katana Man. I don't know, let's just go with that for now. But even in Chainsaw Man, where the devil design has given us some of the best creature design, we have this guy who is just unmistakable. Just look at him. So then Aki tries to fight him with the Cursed Devil, a sequence that made a lot more sense to me here than it did in the manga. Although when he was being held up by the Cursed Devil, nothing seemed to happen. It just cut and then Katana Man was just lying there in a pool of blood. The way I'd interpreted that from the manga was that the Cursed Devil was holding him in such a way and then broke all his bones and then just dropped him on the floor. Shlop. So I'm going to Google this to figure out exactly what's happening here. I really love the way the Cursed Devil appeared though. That was awesome. What I didn't get from the manga was that the Cursed Devil was like flicking Aki forward so he could spear his target. I didn't get that, but you know, maybe that's just me. Probably is this you, yeah. Yep, thanks. Everybody, Debbie. Debbie's the voice of my doubt. Debbie, everybody. Hi, everybody. Shame there's not very many people watching us. Shut the fuck up, Debbie! After all of that, after Aki has used what feels like his ace in the hole, Akani Sawatari appears and just like resuscitates Katana Man, like, no biggie, I'm fine, before he cuts through Aki faster than the eye can see. Again, the animation here way surpassed my expectations. I knew this part was going to be awesome, okay? I knew that, but it still managed to surprise me. Then we have the whole heartbreaking part with Himeno slowly disappearing as she trades her life for Aki's. We finally see the ghost devil in full, which looked so incredible, much bigger than you initially think. And I really noticed the flowers down its neck this time around, prompting me to wonder what the significance of them actually are. Maybe gray flowers, I'm not sure. Its battle with Katana Man was fast and crazy. All the hands and arms finally managed to get past his defenses, like, and pierce his body. Only for Akane to casually order the snake devil to eat the ghost devil and render this whole defense completely pointless. It's devastating, especially as Aki looks over and sees that Himeno has sacrificed everything and there's just like an empty white shirt lying there and an eye patch. Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking! Overall, fantastic, fantastic episode. I absolutely loved it. It's got the Fox Devil, it's got the Cursed Devil, it's got the Snake Devil, it's got Katana Man, it's got Himeno's hefty bosoms, and you know, her horrible death, of course. It's got the shock of seeing Makima shot through the head, but wait, if... He was going to eat one of his own body parts. Why would he choose his foot? Practical reasons. 
Such as? Well, it fell off anyway. So it was just like, well, I might as well eat that. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose you would, wouldn't you? And I just want to conclude by saying that this episode is a perfect example of everything I hoped the anime was going to be. Because although the rest of the anime is amazing, no doubt, if you've read the manga, there's not a whole lot of surprises in there for you. But in this episode, the combination of the fact that there's so many brilliant moments back to back, plus the fact that they're so well executed in terms of their delivery, out how they show the ghost devil here. means that you can still be surprised by just how fucking good this is. And you know what? I've got a feeling that next week's episode is going to be even better. From what I remember, the next part in the sequence of events. Well, look, I won't say too much. Just make sure you subscribe and I will see you very soon for the next one. Thank you very much for watching. And wait, why was he having to eat his own limb in the first place?